This is the meeting of the Board of Parks and Recreation. I am the chair of the Parks and Recreation Board. Will you stand and let's do the Pledge of Allegiance together. I pledge allegiance to the So the appeal of decisions I'll read to you pursuant to the provisions of 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Please take notice that decisions of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiorari. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after entry of a final decision by the board. Any person or other entity considering an appeal should, should consult with an attorney to ensure that time and procedural requirements are met. Moving now to the consideration of minutes. Uh, board members, have you had an opportunity to read the minutes of our May meeting? And is there any discussion? All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. <laughs> Director Odom, are there any referrals from council members present today? None today, Madam Chair. All right, thank you. We're going to start with old business and we have 052210. Harpeth Valley Utility District requests a dedicated temporary construction easement and a permanent utility easement for installation of two new sewer pipelines that will parallel existing sewer infrastructure across the Bells Bend property owned by Metro. That's at 4107 Old Hickory Boulevard, parcel number 10100000100. The utility contractor will access the construction area entirely from HVUD's adjacent property to install the sewer lines and no access on Metro property from outside of the requested easements will be necessary. The acquisition committee met prior to this meeting. Commissioner Haynes, do you have a report? We recommend approval. Is there any discussion? I'll accept a motion. Make a motion to approve. All right, properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And now we are going to move to the consent agenda. I'll, I'll accept a motion to accept the consent agenda in its entirety. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. All righty. So on to new business, number 06-22-02, board to approve open range salary increase and cost of living salary increase consistent with Metro employees for the director of parks as per the 2022-23 Metropolitan Government Pay Plan. The Metro plan allows for a 3% open range, which is merit-based, and a 4% cost of living increase. And I will take a moment of personal privilege to say how grateful we are to our fabulous director. And um, I'm wondering if there are any questions or discussions from board members. I'll accept a motion. Go ahead. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Moving to 06-2203, Forward Entertainment requests approval of a name change for a fundraising event permitted as the permitted as the Music City Jubilee Festival. They want to change the name to the Hot Chicken Music Festival. The event was approved as a consent agenda item in October 2021 and is scheduled for Saturday, July 30th, 2022 at Walk of Fame Park. Director Odom, do you have comments? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, For Forward Entertainment has advised staff that um, they would like to change the name, not to Hot Chicken Music Festival, but Innovative, Innovative Concepts and Events Hot Chicken Music Festival, ra rather than what is printed on your agenda. Um, the staff recommendation is that um, any phrasing that includes Hot Chicken Festival, Hot Chicken Music Festival, um, be removed um, because of the confusion that it 
that it creates with an already existing uh, legacy event that um, happens in parks and benefits, benefits the park system. Thank you, Director Odom. Is there a representative from Forward Entertainment available for a brief explanation? Thank you. I'm just speaking on what a... Pardon? I said, what a... What are you asking me to speak on? Did you want to explain? Oh, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, with the mute... I understand the confusion of the name change. Oh, c excuse me. Will you introduce yourself and tell us your name? Otis Carter. Otis Carter? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well, uh, I understand the confusion between the Music City Hot Chicken Festival and the uh, Hot Chicken Music Festival, but I wanted to explain the difference name-wise and I explained the difference event-wise. Uh, Music City being a moniker for Nashville and Hot Chicken being the type of festival that it is makes it completely different from Hot Chicken being the name of the festival and a music festival as being what it actually is. Hot Chicken Festival would be the same as a beer festival, a hot chicken festival, a seafood festival. Ours is a music festival. The event-wise is a major concert with over 10, 15 musical acts, nationally touring artists to local uh, rising stars, totally different premise, totally different event. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Carter? Oh, that was it. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Carter. I do have a question. Oh. I'm sorry. Yes. Me a Go ahead. So it's a music festival. Are you serving? Will there be vendors for hot chicken? Are we will have a few hot chicken. What is the connection? We, I mean, Nashville, Nashville is the connection to hot chicken. Since the, all the musicians are locally based and bred and born just like the hot, uh, hot chicken. High Chicken is Nashville-based, locally bred and born, has took over the nation nationally, just like our artists and our musicians. So that's the connection between the name. Yes? Um, does any of this, or do you anticipate or planning on any of this uh, benefiting any nonprofits? Yes, we're, walking, we're working with uh, the Nashville Convention Bureau, and we're going to uh, donate to them, to the Walk of Fame Park. I think the, don't, I think our proceeds will benefit the Elks. I'm talking with Butch. Other questions for Mr. Carter? Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Mayor Purcell, do you have comments? Well, thank you, Madam Chair and former chairs, future chairs, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, to Director Odom. Uh, I'm here together with Abby Trotter and also Brenda Wynn. Uh, 16 years ago, uh, this parks board now that has gone on year after year after year for 16 years in a park for the benefit of the parks and you have been an incredible partner in all of that work we are absolutely for music we are for music city we are for hot chicken we are for festivals we are for all of the things that this parks board and and, and today you've heard again another opportunity for that the only issue really is is the issue of confusion as the director pointed out and so long and the, in the original uh, name obviously there's no confusion at all. Uh, so long as this parks board continues to, to separate in the minds of vendors and of customers and of citizens, uh, they, are, they are very different, both celebrating an important part of Nashville and what we are and who we are, uh, but there's also simply a question of confusion in the minds of consumers, and we appreciate it. I don't know if the, if the board wants to hear from any others about this. I think you know pretty much all that you need to know. Thank you, Mayor Purcell. Questions for Mayor Purcell? Or for other members of the hot ch yes, George. Discussion? Do you have discussion? Oh, I'd like to make a motion that we do not approve this due to the confusion. Um, nothing against your event. You just need to find another name. It's much too confusing. After 16, 17 years, the benefit of a free event to the public and the amount of goodwill and nonprofit um, uh, uh, receipts and donations that have gone back to our parks, the Fringes Shelby Park. We're all heavily involved in this. It's part of the community, and I think we have enough confusion in this world that we don't need to cause more of it. So I think y'all really need to go back and find another name and work with the Parks Department to do that. But it's very confusing, and so I make a motion that we do not approve. Thank you. Other, other comments? Discussion? 
Thank you for the second. Dr. Steele? No, nothing else? All right. Um, well, it's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor of the motion that we do not approve the uh, name change request. All right. That sounds unanimous. Any opposed? All right. The motion passes. <laughs> Uh, all right, we'll move to 062204. Staff request acceptance of a $2,000 donation from Backfield in Motion. This donation is to be used for the Community Center Youth Sports. There is no required match or other obligation by parks associated with this donation. Director Odom, is there a recommendation? Staff recommends approval. All right, I'll accept a motion. Any discussion? It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? The motion passes. 062205, staff requests acceptance of a $10,000 grant for improvements to Elizabeth Park from David P. Crabtree to Metro Parks and Recreation. There is no required match or other obligation by parks associated with this grant. Director Odom, is there a recommendation? Yes, staff recommends approval. Is there any discussion? I'll accept a motion. It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Number 062206. Staff requests acceptance of a donation of artwork, Pathway to a Higher Note. The artwork is a community participation sculpture created in partnership with local artist Betty Turney Turner and was created in commemoration of Juneteenth. The Curb Center for Art, Enterprise, and Public Policy at Vanderbilt University seeks to donate the sculpture for public display on the grounds of Centennial Art Center. There is no required match or other obligation by parks associated with this donation. Director Odom, is there a recommendation? Yes, ma'am. Staff recommends approval. Any discussion? I'll accept a motion. It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Number 062207, Adventure Science Center requests approval per current lease provision to develop a rooftop deck. The Metro Historic Zoning Commission's preliminary assessment is that the proposed improvements conform to requirements of the local historic landmark ordinance. This building improvement does not increase the overall height of the building or impact views from Fort Negley. Director Odom, is there a recommendation? Yes, ma'am. Staff recommends approval, and uh, Mr. Hinckley from the Adventure Science Center is here if you have questions. Yes. Uh, uh, Steve Hinckley, CEO of the Adventure Science Center, come on up. I know you have a brief presentation. Thank you, members of the board. Director Odin, good to see you. Um, I do, I believe, have a presentation that we shared, and hopefully we'll be able to pull that up quickly. Uh, yes, we're seeking two things from you all today, if we may. Uh, one is approval of the idea that we're proposing to you today. Uh, I do have our architect here as well, Chuck Miller from Tuck Hinton, to answer any questions should those arise. And then secondarily, uh, per the provision in our lease, we are supposed to get written approval from the Parks Board, and so helping me understand what that written approval looks like and so forth would be particularly helpful. So uh, this is the rooftop proposal that we have, um, and if you want to, oh, do I? Oh, got it, perfect, thank you. Um, perfect. So uh, as you can see here, this is the current facility for the Adventure Science Center. Um, and then specifically, where we are talking about is <clears throat> on that lower portion of the first floor, just down outline, but hard to see. <clears throat> that roof was constructed in the early 2000s. It was not structurally designed to support weight. Um, it was purely just simply to cover the, the two spaces that are contained below it. So we are seeking approval to be able to structurally bolster that so that it can support people with access to that rooftop space coming from the existing facility um, from, from inside that second floor effectively. <clears throat> the perimeter of that rooftop would be um, designed in such a way so that obviously to prevent falls, again, you know, conforming with code and so forth. But the basic idea is to be able to create a, 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 an event space of 5,600 square feet that would allow us to have 375 people or so up on that rooftop. 
We could also create exhibits that would allow people to view the city and the ever-changing skyline uh, from that particular vantage point, as well as to observations of sun, stars, and so forth from that particular space. So it's, it's intended to be multi-purpose, serve a number of different uses, and then also certainly, uh, not that I'm pitching it already today, but if anybody wanted to rent out that space, um, it is a fabulous place to see the 4th of July fireworks and so forth. So it's all around just a, a good addition to the building and something that allows us to serve the community in a bit of a different way. Um, there's a little bit of an eye chart here, but basically I just wanted to sort of reassure the board and anyone of concern that the scope of the project does confine itself within the existing footprint of the building. There's nothing yet proposed that would take any a part of this project outside of the building envelope. Um, our goal in working with the architect as well as structural engineer and our general contractor is to put all of the supporting infrastructure for that rooftop uh, inside the current envelope of the facility. So again, nothing taking us outside of that building. Again, recognizing that there's some sensitivities to the site. Um, I think that there's, that's pretty much it. The, again, just to reiterate there, there is not a, uh, a viewshed impact from Fort Negley. Um, if you're looking at uh, the Science Center from Fort Negley, you wouldn't actually even see any part of this rooftop since it is on the north side and Fort Negley is to our south. Um, and then just a few renderings to give you a, a little bit of a conceptual idea of what we're talking about. So this is the 5,600 square feet. Again, this would be primarily accessible from that second floor, uh, which is currently the human body, ga body gallery. Uh, that will be renovated in 2024 um, as a completely different exhibit experience. And so we're trying to see if we can merge these two projects at the same time. And again, there's just a view of that and some of the concept renderings in terms of what that space may look like when it's eventually completed. We don't yet have a project date. This is part of my due diligence process. It's just coming to you all for that required approval so that hopefully we can engage our architects and so forth to move forward. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Hinckley? How, how many people can you accommodate without that inside? Like if you had a private event? On, on the rooftop? No, in, no, inside inside the building yeah. uh, we can accommodate safely about 1500 people oh, really? in, inside the current facility yeah and would you envision you having that and a rooftop and two separate groups up there you certainly could yes yeah the only reason i'm asking is more it's more of a parking issue and our parks are like under assault for parking so i'm just wondering you know you might want to be thinking about that a little bit yes. i don't know how many parking spaces you have we have 290 spaces currently yes other questions? Have you, uh, in the design, are you all considering any, um, and I don't know the terminology, greening of the roof, any sustainable practices? We haven't gotten that far in the okay. concept design yet, but certainly there are some elements that would, would be um, nice to have, and looking at it particularly as an event space to soften the, the landscape there a little bit and put some greenery up on the rooftop is certainly a consideration, but we just haven't gotten that far yet. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other discussion? I'll accept a motion. Second. All right. It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll, we'll want to be invited to the, to the grand opening. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, moving to number 062208, staff request acceptance of an in-kind grant not to exceed $1,571,441 from Friends of Warner Parks to fund the next phase of improvements in Warner Parks. This grant requires no match or other obligation from Metro Parks. No money will be sent to Metro Parks. All projects will be paid for directly by Friends of Warner Parks and coordinated with Metro Parks staff. Director Odom, is there a recommendation? Staff recommends approval. Is there any discussion? I'll accept a motion. It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. 062209, Friends of Warner Parks request acceptance of a special work education and trails or SWET staffing grant for fiscal year 2023 in the amount of $46,252.63. The grant will be distributed via, via quarterly reimbursements, reimbursements to Metro Parks as detailed below. Um, there will be a SWET M&R worker seasonal staff, which is step four, in the amount of $8,360.10 and sweat M&R worker seasonal staff steps 
three, and four in the amount of $37,892.53. Friends of Warner Parks will reimburse grant total amounts exceeded due to hourly wage, cha wage changes or COLA or so on. This grant does not require a match nor any type of further fulfillment by Metro Parks. Director Odom, is there a staff recommendation? Staff recommends approval. Any discussion? All right, uh, I'll accept a motion. It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? The motion passes. Number 062210, also from Friends of Warner Parks, request acceptance of a staffing grant for fiscal year 2023 in the amount of $62,080.27. The details are as follows. Friends of Warner Park staffing salaries in the amount of $60,180.27 and a copier, a RICO copier, in the amount of $1,900. Friends of Warner Parks will reimburse grant total amounts exceeded due to hourly wage changes or COLA. This grant does not require a match or any type of further fulfillment by Metro Parks. Director Odom, is there a recommendation? Staff recommends approval. Any discussion? I'll accept a motion. It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? The motion passes. 062211, staff requests acceptance of an $8,000 in-kind grant for improvement to the Ted Rhodes Golf Course from Sweetens Cove. There's no required match or other obligation by parks associated with this grant. Director Odom, is there a recommendation? Staff recommends approval. All right. Any discussion? Yeah. I'm just kind of curious what it was. I mean, this in-kind grant. John Holmes. I'm not sure what you mean. It's Eight thousand. What it's going to be used for? Is it just cash or is it? No, they're going to do uh, landscaping improvements around the clubhouse. Uh, they've talked about a flagpole, putting in uh, where the folks. That area under the mm -hmm. trees there, maybe putting some ground cover in there. Just ways to spruce it up around the clubhouse, make it look more inviting. And um, they, um, I mean, this is fantastic. I mean, did they just come to us? Or, I mean, obviously they got a very successful golf course out in South Pittsburgh. The owners of Sweetens Cove have uh, expanded their business and they're starting a bourbon uh, company. Mm -hmm. And so what they're doing one dollar, I think it's one dollar from each bottle that they sell, they're donating back to golf courses around the country. And we were lucky enough to be one of those that were selected. Excellent, thank you. Yes, sir. And for those of us who may not know, Sweetens Cove, what is it? It's a incredible little nine hole course in, I actually haven't been there, my son has. Um, it's, it, it's known na nationwide, it's a, just a little nine hole, course out in South Pittsburgh South Pittsburgh yeah and uh, it's very popular okay so. interesting all right um, any other questions or discussion I'll accept a motion a motion all right second, second. Uh, it's been properly moved and seconded all in favor opposed the motion passes number 062212 Staff requests approval to petition the Tennessee Historical Commission for a waiver to the Tennessee Heritage Protection Act for the purpose of implementing the forthcoming Fort Negley Master Plan. Director Odom, would you like to tell us a little about this? Staff recommends approval and I'll defer to Tim Nage. Thank you. Thank you. So as you may know, in 2018, the Tennessee Historical Commission determined that the entire property that we own at Fort Negley is um, considered a memorial under the Tennessee Heritage Protection Act. And the language in that act um, prohibits any disturbance or alteration to a memorial without a waiver. That means that anything we do on that site, any disturbance, any development, any implementation of the master plan requires a waiver. So we have met with the staff of the Tennessee Historical Commission and they, 
understand that our goal with this master plan is to ensure that all of its recommendations are at least conceptually um, feasible and implementable. So uh, we, in after consultation with Tennessee Historical Commission and with um, Macy, the determination was made that the best path forward is to request a waiver for the entire master plan um, from the Tennessee Historical Commission. Any questions? Discussion? Make a motion for approval. All right, thank you for that explanation. Um, it's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, the motion passes. We'll move now to our special presentations, and um, each group will have seven minutes to present. We have Creative Parks Nashville that will present their annual update to the board. And will you come up and introduce yourselves to us? Tell us what you've been up to. Hi, um, I'm Michelle Crane. I'm the president of Creative Parks Nashville, and um, we've had an exciting year um, and look forward to the next fiscal year. Um, representing all three of the parks, arts, divisions, music, theater, and visual arts. Um, do you click up or down? I don't think it's in slideshow uh, mode. Uh, Sideways, okay. okay. Um, our mission statement is clear that we exist to support the three divisions in their efforts to provide educational arts, related activities, and diverse, excuse me, diverse cultural events for the greater Nashville area. Oh. Our vision statement provides how the funds we raise have a direct impact on providing accessible and affordable programming for any students who wish to participate in the music, visual, and theater classes or camps. This is a profit and loss report, but it's actually for the prior year because our fiscal year is not up yet. So this was during COVID, which I thought was actually pretty good. Um, the next slide is um, how we support the cultural arts with youth scholarships. Um, CPN provided 45 youth scholarships for the three divisions, and they're kind of broken down there. Keeping in line with our vision statement, CPN was able to provide funding for 25 music, theater, and art workshops and approximately 359 students. CPN's fundraising efforts assist the Big Band Dance, Bob Ross painting classes, theater workshops, jam band concerts, inclusive pottery classes, guitar lessons, and more. Centennial Art Center celebrated their 50th year anniversary this year with a large celebration including storytelling, a dance performance, the historical marker unveiling, and a gallery exhibit, all focused on the civil rights story of the closing of the Centennial Public Pool House. CPN is grateful to the Centennial Conservancy for providing funding for the CAC historical marker. The unveiling was highly attended with several government officials, professors, and legislators speaking about the importance of this civil rights story to be told in Nashville. Oh. Creative Parks Nashville held our first fundraising event last summer on August 28th. Starry Night was a beautiful event with music, art, and theater performances from current and former students. Being our first event, we learned how to streamline the processes and expand our exposure for the upcoming Starry Night event. Can you click that, please? Um, hopefully, we'll see all of you at our upcoming event. Um, this is a preview of our motion animated invitation, which is coming up on September 10th, and we're very excited. Thank you all for allowing CPN to provide, to continue to provide support for the visual, music, and theater, Metro Parks Arts Divisions. Thank you, thank you for all the good work you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. 
Any questions for Michelle from board members? All right, thank you so much. I appreciate, I really appreciate you. So our next uh, special presentation will be from Friends of Green Hills Park the, to present an annual update to the board. And please introduce yourself to us and tell us what you've been up to. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Patrick Bradley, and I am the co-founder and treasurer of the Friends of Green Hills Park that formed back in 2015. Um, thank you all for your time today. Really appreciate the opportunity to present to you all. I don't have a presentation, so I'm just gonna talk to you about what we've been up to. There are three main things that I wanted to talk about today, our community engagement, our park improvements, and our financials. And I'll start off with our community engagement, which has been, um, you know, it, it took a little bit of a hit in 2020, and in 2021, I think we really came back. Uh, as some of you all know from our previous presentations, we do an annual festival uh, each year at the Green Hills Park. And this past year, in 2020, we had, we estimate about 2,000 people attend that festival, food trucks, um, live music, events for kids, very family friendly. Uh, this year we had um, baby goats show up and I wish I'd brought a picture for you all of kids running around with these baby goats. It was very, very cute. Um, college football trailer uh, for anybody who's into college football. And it's a great way for us to engage with the community. One of the challenges we have at Green Hills Park is that people don't know it's a park when they first visit because it's attached to JT Moore. They think it's just part of the school. So we've really tried to push that this is a park, you can get involved and you can make changes at this park. So that festival is a great way to do that. We've got our festival set for September uh, coming up in this year. We've already got our lead sponsor, Gluck Orthodontics, which is a local orthodontics practice who's now sponsored the past two years. They've been a great partner for us. And we think that that's going to be another great success. Um, to somebody's point earlier, they asked a question about parking. That's gonna be one of the challenges with our events. So we're working with uh, some, some community um, and neighborhood um, uh, individuals and organizations like Lipscomb to try to see if we can maybe get a shuttle to, you know, head off any sort of complaints about people parking in front of um, neighbors driveways, things like that. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the community engagement piece. Uh, in terms of park improvements, one of the biggest things that we'd like to do is we'd like to build a pavilion at the park. And we've already got one pavilion. It's pretty far away from the parking lot and the water fountain. And our goal was to build a smaller pavilion that's closer to some of the athletic fields. And so we set out to do that. We raised the money and um, 2020 came around, 2021, the cost of everything went up significantly. Uh, so we've changed our focus a little bit from what we were going to do, which is a wooden pavilion, to a metal pavilion that has a cloth cover on it. And we think that that's gonna serve the same needs for the park users, uh, but allow us to use our funds a little bit more wisely uh, doing that project and also possibly doing a new water fountain at the park. There's, um, there's a water fountain there. It's on one side of the park. You'd have to walk a pretty long way from the uh, playground to get to it. So eventually what we'd like to be able to do is put another water fountain at the park. We think that that would be great for parents who have little kids playing at the playground. Um, so those are, those are two of the things that we're focusing on. We also submitted a traffic calming application that was granted by, uh, now I guess it's NDOT. And so we're working with NDOT to try to get some traffic calming measures along Belmont Park Terrace. Uh, we had a couple of community meetings. We got some great feedback from neighbors on that. And so we're actually proceeding with uh, getting signatures on that and maybe putting some speed cushions down Belmont Park Terrace just to slow down traffic uh, around the park. Um, and finally, uh, we're focused on getting rid of all the invasive species. I know um, honeysuckle is all over in our parks. You know, Percy Warner does a great job. Shelby does a great job of organizing events to get that out, replace those things with native species. So we're, we're taking that on as well. Uh, the final item that I wanted to talk about, and you can see in our report, our financials, I think we're in great financial position. Um, we have quite a bit of money in the bank right now, and uh, we'd like to put that to use as um, in the form of improvements for park users. Uh, and part of the reason that it's sitting there is because the cost of the pavilion did increase exponentially. Uh, and, um, and so, you know, we're hoping that by the end of this year, we can, we can build that pavilion and potentially even uh, move forward on, the, on a water fountain. So those are our updates. I'm happy to answer any questions that you all might have. Questions for Mr. Bradley? Thank you so much. Thank Sounds you. like exciting things going on. Thank you very much. Thank you, you, all you very much. All right. 
Let's move to our capital projects update. Tim, back at the podium. Thank you. As usual, I'll just hit the highlights. Um, there are two new projects on this list. One is the <clears throat> First and Gay Park redevelopment. This is property that we have owned for a very long time on uh, the Cumberland River uh, downtown, um, but currently it, it just contains a short segment of the Cumberland River Greenway and is otherwise surface parking for the Sheriff's Office. So we have design and construction funds to redevelop that space and turn it into a uh, neighborhood amenity there. Uh, Tusculum Road is the other new project. This is the 10 acres that we recently acquired and we have funding uh, first for a master plan and then for phase one um, uh, design. So uh, we are in the process of soliciting design proposals, design and master planning proposals for both of those. Um, at Fort Negley, uh, we are planning a third and final round of public events, um, actually one event on June 30th. Uh, so you will all get notice of that. Um, and at Severe Park, uh, we are, uh, will hopefully um, come to terms with uh, the construction uh, bidder um, on pricing and be able to move into um, contract execution there. At Wharf Park, uh, we had originally been prepared to have a, a third and final round of public meetings on that later this month um, before council uh, is the um, acquisition tonight is the acquisition of 88 Hermitage, which is a property that would be added to Wharf Park. Um, so we are putting pause on final uh, presentation of the master plan until that's resolved. And then assuming we acquire that property, there's some additional study associated with affordable housing and the future of the historic school for the blind building that will be undertaken by the Metro Planning Department that we will wait to be completed and then finally, uh, Metro uh, Housing Impact Division will be releasing an encampment strategy. So we're grateful that all of those important processes are moving forward and we've been given some breathing room to allow those to um, develop before we roll out a final master plan. Those are the highlights. Thank Thanks. you, Tim. Questions for Tim? Tim, the, the um, event on June 30th, is, it's a, what kind of event is that at, it, at Fort Negley? It will be at 530 at the Visitor Center, and we will have a presentation followed by kind of a, an open house format for people to, to look at the project boards and other presentation I materials. See. So it's regarding the master plan. Okay. That's right. Thank you. All right. Update. Hello. I'm just gonna hit three highlights today. Uh, the first one is the Charlotte Corridor Railway Greenway Project. We've got our community meetings this Thursday and Saturday. Um, so I encourage you all to come if you can. I think you've got a flyer regarding that, but we are in the middle of master planning that project and uh, have been having stakeholder meetings, but this will be our first outreach to the community uh, on a broad basis. So we're, we're very excited about that project. Um, second, in, let me just mention, June 9th, 6 to 8, Family and Children's Service Building, Saturday, June the 11th, from 10 to 1, it's come and go, um, kind of a cafeteria style community meetings. Um, we had our kickoff meeting last week for the next section, the 440 Greenway. This would connect um, Severe Park to Galilean Park to Browns Creek Park. Uh, all of those uh, have trails, and so it's it's an important segment. Um, we will be having community meetings on that also, but we haven't set the schedule yet for that. And then thirdly, the Gulch Greenway behind Assurian in um, headquarters, that construction will finish up this month. And in addition to the trail, there are trailhead improvements under the Church Street Bridge that are being made, and Assurian is... is um, doing a, or has acquired a mural along the side of their building, which will face our Greenway. It's not on our property, but it is is a good addition to the trailhead. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll do a ribbon cutting for that and let you all know about that, but it's, it's pretty exciting uh, upgrade to what we have there. Those are the highlights. Thank you. Severe Park to Gale Lane Park to Browns Creek Park. 
it's only about a mile, um, but three parks. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's great. Thanks. Great. Any other questions? Okay. Well, Jackie Jones, upcoming special activities and events. Good afternoon, everybody. So you know it's June, and because it's June, we have a lot going on. We have so much going on. I'm going to have to read a lot of this to you rather than to talk to you about it because I want you to get the full flavor of everything going on in the park system. So we have two outdoor movies scheduled, one in Elmington Park from 5 to 9 p.m. on Thursday, June 9th. And that's a part of the Nashville Scenes Movies in the Park series. We also have outdoor cinema at Mill Ridge Park on Friday, June 17th from 7 to 10 p.m. Uh, that series also runs through the month of June. Now, one of the most popular events of the summer, of course, is our big band dances. And this year, they're back at the Centennial Event Shelter uh, from 7 to 10 p.m. every Saturday through August. Uh, in addition to the big band dances, we have Musicians Corner on Fridays from 5 to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from noon to 6 p.m. through June in Centennial Park and Red Caboose Concerts at Bellevue Park on Fridays in June at 7 p.m. And then we also have Tales at Twilight at Cumberland Park also on Fridays uh, in July. And those... Uh, uh, that event starts at 7 p.m. as well. Our picking parties are back, uh, one at Cornelia Fort on Saturdays from 7 to 10 p.m. and the full moon picking party at Warner Parks on Friday evenings from 5.30 to 10.30 p.m. Uh, we have farmer's markets scheduled on various days at Severe, Richland, and Two Rivers Mansion. And finally, we have Juneteenth events scheduled at Fort Negley, Hadley, McKissick, Riverfront, Watkins, and Morgan Park. That concludes my report. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. It's fun. I love to see activated parks. It's great. Director Odom, do you have a report for us? I do have a report, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, and thank all of you. Um, my report will be brief, but I first want to um, address... Uh, a report that appeared on News Channel 5 um, last evening about our golf courses. Um, it was an investigative report, and on the um, the aired vision, uh, aired version, pardon me, um, there was some um, some some facts that were le left out that we had clarified um, to the reporter. So um, those appeared today, I believe, in a print version. Um, of that um, of that report, but I wanted to make clear um, that um, a conversation uh, uh, referenced between myself and uh, Metro Human Relations Human Resources Director Shannon Hall uh, referenced our uh, pay range of seasonals and not the pay rate. Um, the gist for me of the on-air version of the um, of the report uh, really implied that I or we at Metro Parks are, uh, do not support pay increases for seasonals, and that could not be further from the truth. As you all know, we are mindful of the budget um, and shift and sort of manipulate um, seasonal positions and budgets as we are able. Um, we certainly will continue to work with um, our partners in Metro um, Human Resources to make sure that um, our pay rate and pay range um, are uh, commensurate with what they should be, the, the position description. So I just wanted to, to um, make that clear. I was certain that you all probably knew, but wanted to make that clear that there had been some confusion, uh, apparently, between pay rate and pay range. Um, and certainly to, um, from the horse's mouth, if you will, communicate our support of um, seasonal staff and seasonal employees um, in metro parks and across this city, across this country. So I wanted to say that first. Um, and then to thank all of you all for your support of our uh, FY23 operating budget submission. Uh, as you all know, uh, Metro Council, Metro City leaders are still in the process of finalizing what that budget will look like. Um, there is a council meeting tonight that will 
um, discuss uh, budget improvement requests or budget changes, I should say. So thank you all for that. And we look forward to um, what comes from a finalized budget. It will be finalized by June 30th. Um, that is the charter deadline. So we look forward to that. Um, Jim Hester has been working on the solicitation for programming at um, Church Street Park. I believe that solicitation was published this week and is out. And so um, he will be continuing to work with our procurement um, division in Metro Finance to um, get a, uh, a permit holder or a vendor in place for that. We're looking forward to that. And then as Jackie just said, and Tim and Cindy, um, I'll just say the park system is busy. You all know that it's summertime, it's hot outside. So we're very busy. Uh, Wave Country opened Memorial Day weekend without incident. Thank you, John Holmes, your team and Park Police and MNPD as well. Um, I think the increase of um, attendance was about 1400 visitors over last year. Um, so that's, that's significant. Our summer enrichment programs started yesterday in community centers. All of them are full, uh, with the exception of, I think, maybe three. Um, we're excited about that. Warner Park Nature Center summer camps started this week, and sessions are full. Um, just FYI, the uh, petitions to rename Hadley Park and the petition to relocate the private Confederate monument have been confirmed for the June 17th agenda of the Tennessee Historical Commission. I will be attending that meeting uh, with Ms. Amos. Um, and uh, again, throughout the park system, we are still working to fill vacancies. It is, it is challenging. Um, and then two, finally, our um, maintenance division, consolidated maintenance division is working to support every other area in the park system. Um, they work hard like all of us but they support everyone else and, and are in um, full effect now. So if you happen to see any of them or any of our other teammates, give them a, a pat on the back. This is, is, as you know, an extremely busy season for us. And uh, I know they would appreciate hearing your thanks. So any questions for me? I, I have a question about the Church Street Park. Yes. Um, can you say a little bit more about that, what we're looking for with that solicitation? Certainly. So um, the solicitation for, uh, the request is for um, programming and management, um, similar to, to what we have had with the in-kind grant. So it's really what we have found to be the most efficient way to um, keep that park activated at the level that has been most successful um, is to have a permit holder um, and who will, you know, organize the programming. It will still remain public space, but um, using the um, procurement process assures that it is a competitive process, that people, other organizations know about the availability of this opportunity and um, they can submit proposals and those can be evaluated fairly um, and without bias. And how is that funded? It would be it would be funded through the organization, whatever organization. They're coming with a proposal to do the programming. We are not funding it other than what we, the park system currently does. We service the park, maintenance, service it daily. Um, so that is, you know, emptying of trash cans and things like that. Um, other than that. So, so they would charge for the activities? No. 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 Okay. No. No, like, like now with the in-kind grant, it is um, programmed so that it is uh, really an amenity to the business community and the resident in that area. So whether it is live music um, or some, um, I don't think they've had a movie in the park, but they could, or a puppet show, something like that. And there may be, uh, you said um, they don't charge, but there could possibly be a, um, a food vendor Mm -hmm, or sure. a, a drink vendor there that they would charge, but so we still have funding from the the grant. It expires June thirty, and it was okay. in kind. So so the funding didn't come to us. Mm -hmm. It was just the organization okay. that funded it. Thank you. Any other You're questions? Welcome. Any other um, announcements? Anybody? 
board members, requests for future agenda items or open items? Anything you'd like to see us consider at another meeting? Uh, Madam Chair, I'd just like to mention and remind you, I think I reminded you last month as well, we're working on the um, site visit tour. I think we have, a, we have a date of July, July 14th, and we will be in touch with you as we get closer to that date about the details where we'll, we'll meet and where we're going. So looking forward to that. Great. All right, thank you very much. Um, I think it's time to adjourn this meeting. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.